Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's look at the representation of the phaser format of a sinusoid. What do we really mean by the phaser format? Well, let's go back to what we learned a few videos ago, where we had a representation for the voltage as a function of time, which was equal to the maximum voltage times the cosine of omega t. And here again, we have that graph, where on the vertical axis, we have v of t, and on the horizontal axis, we have omega t. And you can see that for different, for different time, we have different magnitudes of the voltage. Here we have the maximum value, zero, the negative maximum, zero, positive maximum, and so forth. So the voltage always changes with time. And so that was represented by this equation right here. But now we want to represent that with a phaser format. So if we now compare this to this, we first have to understand again that we might have a phase difference. So if there's a positive phase difference, instead of drawing the vector this way, we draw the vector this way. And so we can then see that the projection onto the, ver onto the horizontal axis represents what the voltage is at the moment in time when t is a particular value. So you can see that if there's a phase difference, it will shift everything over and at t equals zero, we'll have a much smaller voltage if there's a phase difference. Now here we have the phaser format of the same thing. Notice that we have the magnitude of the voltage, which we call the Vmax. So Vmax would be the magnitude of this vector, and then we have a phase difference. Now if the phase difference is zero, the vector, of course, would be on the horizontal real axis. So what is the real part of that vector? The real part of that vector is the projection of the vector onto the real axis, which represents the voltage at a particular moment in time. So let's now go back over here and take a look at that equation. The voltage as a function of time is equal to the maximum voltage times the cosine of omega t plus some phase angle. If we now want to write this into the exponential form, we want to take the real part of that because the exponential form has both the cosine and the sine in it, and we just want to take the real part of that if we want to talk about the cosine. So we can say that this can be written like this if we take only the real part of the exponential form. Since the exponent is the sum of two things, we can write this then as the product of these two, so the real part of e to the j times phi and e to the j times omega t. Now, the phi portion of that is simply the phase difference between we, we would, what we would have if we have no phase difference, which means a maximum voltage of t equals zero, and a phase difference when there's a plus phi, that means that we don't have the maximum voltage of t equals zero because we've been shifted by a certain amount of phase. The omega t is a constantly rotating part. As time goes on, you can see that the voltage will continually change. So the omega t part is the sinusoidally varying part, e times j omega, is simply the phase difference that we would have if we were along the horizontal axis as t equals zero versus where we are when t is equal to zero if there's a phase difference. Now, if we take the real part of that, we can write this as follows. We can write v of t is equal to the real part of v times e j omega t. Now, what does this v represent? Well, this v represents v sub m times the real part of this portion right here, the phase difference, which is really a representation or what we would call a projection onto the real axis. So the real part of v times e to the j omega t then simply becomes a projection onto the real axis. What is the length of this vector as it rotates around? Notice when the vector is straight up, the projection would be zero. Over here, the projection would be this long. When the vector is pointing to the right, then the projection is this long. It simply represents the real part of the voltage, the actual voltage value as that phaser turns around. So when we go over here, we can see that this phaser will begin to turn around, and it's simply the projection of that phaser onto the real axis. And as the phaser continues to move like this with, with the omega t portion of the phaser. You can see that as the phaser rotates around, the length of this phaser project onto real axis gets smaller, smaller, and smaller. When the vector is straight up over here, we had zero voltage. When the phaser now goes on this side, now we have a negative voltage. When the phaser is over here, we have a negative maximum voltage. When the phaser comes around and points directly downward, we have zero voltage again. And when the phaser points to the right, we have maximum again. So it's simply a phaser as it rotates around with the j omega portion of it, which makes a turn, 
then we get a projection onto the real axis, which gives us the voltage as a function of time as the phaser rotates around that real and imaginary axis. So we have the portion right here, where, which represents the maximum value or the magnitude of the phaser. And then we take into account that there's a phase angle potentially relative to where the phaser would be when time is equal to zero. So that gives us the maximum uh, that gives us the maximum value or the magnitude of the phaser and the angle where it's located when time is equal to zero. And then we multiply that times e to the j omega t, and then we have the constantly rotating phaser, which gives us the voltage as a function of time, which means it represents the magnitude of the voltage as time continues on like that. This is now, of course, drawn without the phaser. If we want to draw this with a phaser, if we want to move things over to the right just a little bit like this, and we want to draw a phaser diagram that looks like this. We have shifted everything to the left by the angle phi, and so that red line represents a phaser means at time equals zero, we now have a different value for the voltage. And instead of the maximum value from there to there, we only have this much. So notice if there's a phase angle and t is equal to zero, we start with less than the maximum voltage instead of the maximum voltage due to the phase angle. So again, let's summarize the two things. There's two components we need, to take, we need to consider when we deal with phasers. The first component is where is it located? What's the phase difference with where it would be if there was no phase difference? If there's no phase difference, we get maximum voltage at t equals zero. If there's a phase difference, then we have a different voltage at t equals zero, be less than the maximum. And the second part of that is the j omega part or j omega t part which causes the phaser to rotate around. You see every period you come all the way around and everything repeats again. So what we can see here is that the real portion of V times E to the J omega T is simply the projection onto the real axis, which represents the voltage of your phaser at any point in time. And that's what we mean by a phaser representing a sinusoid.